created by Albert Kim based on an American animated fantasy action television series of the same name created by Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konietzko and produced by Nickelodeon Animation Studio. The live action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender is finally released on Netflix. As the action adventure is finally released, we thought this would be the perfect time to discuss the post-credit scene of the series in detail so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on to how the first season ended. In order to help the place and also receive his own education, Aang joins the Northern Water Tribe with his friends. Paku, the most famous waterbending master, is able to teach waterbending techniques to Aang and Katara, but ultimately only the latter takes it seriously and perfects her skills. However, Paku is also strictly against letting women go to war and so he does not want Katara to participate in the upcoming battle. It takes a lot of persuasion and a truly desperate situation for Paku to change his mind and let the women of the tribe participate directly in the war. As the vision shows, Fire Nation forces are actually sailing towards the colony and intend to wage war. They are led by Commander Zhao, a Fire Nation naval officer and he has two intentions. He wants to kill the waterbenders and he also wants to take Avatar Ang to file out Ozai. Zhao actually plans to become a legend and eventually the leader of the Fire Nation as he believes Ozai is a competent leader to rule the world. Zhao's plan to eliminate the water tribe is made all the more cruel and dangerous because he intends to eradicate the very element that serves as the waterbenders life force. Since these people rely heavily on the sea and moon spirits for their powers, Zhao finds and kills the moon spirit itself, immediately threatening the balance of the world and bringing with it the threat of a massive destruction of life. However, it won't be Aang or his friends who save the day. Yui, the princess of the Northern Water Tribe, does so by sacrificing her own life. Yui reveals that she was helped by the moon spirit when she was seriously ill as a child. And thus, her sacrifice is not only for the sake of her tribe's survival, but also as a debt to the moon spirit itself. Since Sokka had fallen in love with Yui, she made sure that he was tied to the ground before she could sacrifice herself, knowing that the young man would have thwarted her plans. Although Yui saves the tribe and all the waterbenders by giving up her powers to revive the moon spirit, she dies in the process. The battle between the amalgamation of Aang and the sea spirit against the Fire Nation's army is also over and the Fire Nation troops finally retreat, ruining their plan to take over. Commander Zhao is also seemingly killed by Zuko and Uncle Iroh, which is somewhat of a direct action against their own Fire Nation. Although the Northern Water Tribe managed to resist the attack and survive, significant damage was caused. As Aang watches the destruction with sadness and once again blames himself for his failure to protect the world, his friends encourage him to look forward and prepare for more attacks like this in the future. At the end of Avatar The Last Airbender, Aang, Katara and Sokka continue their journey to learn more about bending abilities. Zuko's story is complex as his character is not actually evil even though he is currently on the wrong side of the world power. It gradually becomes clear that Zuko is not heartless and cruel like his father Ozai who did not hesitate to sacrifice his own soldiers to win battles for his kingdom. Zuko thought such plans were useless and when he protested against them, he had to fight his own father. Ozai not only left a very painful burn mark on Zuko's face but also banished him from the kingdom, making his son even more ruthless and devoid of compassion for anyone. Zuko was given the near impossible task of finding the avatar and returning him to the kingdom which would be a testament of his service to the Fire Nation. It was why Zuko had pursued Aang so desperately and why his uncle Ozai's own brother Iroh had decided to join him on his quest. Iroh felt that Zuko's banishment was terribly unfair but he was unable to change his brother's mind and instead accompanied the boy. As the journey progressed, Zuko attempted to seek help from Commander Zhao, unaware that he was plotting against him with his own sister Princess Azula. With the princess's help, Zhao managed to resume the mission to kidnap Aang, as Zuko once again found himself on the losing side of the deal. Zhao attempted a mutiny with the help of Lieutenant Ji from Zuko's ship, but Ji realized his mistake when he learned that it was Zuko who saved him and the rest of the crew from certain death. 
Ji and the other crew members were part of the military unit Ozai chose to sacrifice in battle and because Zuko defended them they became his teammate when the prince was banished After Zuko left the Fire Nation princess Asula tried to prove her worth to her father as she wanted to become the next fire lord because of this Asula plots against her brother not wanting him to become her competitor for the title while improving her own fighting skills But it is precisely this sibling rivalry that the heartless Ozai exploits to give his kingdom more control over the world by pitting his own children against each other. In the end, Zuko and Uncle Iro both survive the plots against them and even manage to kill Zhao. However, Zuko admits that he doesn't know what to do next, suggesting that he may very well change his allegiance and side with Aang in the future after realizing the full extent of his father's cruelty. Netflix's Avatar the Last Airbender ends with a plot twist which also serves as a narrative twist for a possible second season. After the end of the war in the Northern Water Tribe, Fire Lord Ozai is informed of the overall unfavorable outcome for his fire nation, but he is not at all concerned. Instead, the man reveals that the waterbenders were not his true target and that the attack was simply a ploy to divert the world's attention to the Northern Water Tribe. At that time, Uzai launched an attack on the city of Omashu, one of the last places not ruled by the Fire Nation. While Avatar Aang, all of his friends and the Northern Water Tribe were busy waging war against the Fire Nation, the Fire Nation forces invaded Omashu, took control of it and captured the land's king Bumi. The fall of Omashu makes the Fire Nation even more powerful and they are literally one city away from ruling the entire Earth Kingdom. Interestingly, the attack on Omashu was also led by Princess Azula, who previously mastered the ability to control lightning, the most powerful form of fire bending that only Uncle Iroh could master in the anime series. This likely ensures that Azula will be the one to move the Fire Nation forward alongside Lord Ozai, and she will become one of the main antagonists moving forward. If a second season does indeed materialize, Zuko and Azula will likely clash and fight for power. The series also features a post-credit scene in which Joe's spiritual prophet tells him that Comet Susin will soon appear in the night sky. Initially, Fire Lord Susin used the power of the same special comet to attack the Airbenders and destroy the entire world, which would later bear his name. Ozai now wants to use the powers of the same comet to conquer the Earth Kingdom's last city, Ba Sing Se. Uncle Iroh had previously attacked the city but he was unable to penetrate its immense walls and retreated after losing his son in the siege. In the second season, Azula will complete her uncle's mission and prove to her father that she is better than both of them. Aang, on the other hand, must stop Ozai before the comet reaches Earth because once Ozai gains his immense powers, the Fire Lord will be impossible to stop and the world will remain in chaos forever. It goes without saying that Avatar the Last Airbender is one of the greatest animated series of all time. A second attempt at a live action adaptation would therefore never take place without high expectations and a keen eye for detail. But over the course of 8 episodes those criticisms while valid tend to fade away as the new avatar gets going. Even though the series doesn't live up to the original in every way, it remains a worthy adaptation that gives the story a richer texture. Most importantly, it captures the spirit of the original while following its own path because as different as the two series may be, this one puts the flawed, complicated and lovable characters front and center, showing what makes them great while adding new layers of depth. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching the Netflix adaptation of Avatar: The Last Airbender. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the timing we're signing off. Farewell if you want to be a bender you have to let go of fear and I'll be back.